I felt thin as death. I've been living on an endless supply of weak old donuts. They were fuel for this crazy furnace inside my head. I couldn't remember when I had last seen the sun. I was on a permanent graveyard shift. When the darkness fell, New York City became something else. Any old Sinatra song notwithstanding. Bad things happened in the night, on the streets of that other city, Noir York City. I was in an all-night diner, downing cup after cup of coffee that tasted like engine oil, when a new message from Bibi got me back on the killer track. What the hell happened at Roscoe Street? Maxie, I'm going out on a limb here. We need to talk this through, come up with a plan. 2.30 a.m., the Choir Communications Garage. The more I thought about Alex's murder in the frame-up, the more it felt like an inside job. I should have seen it coming. Bibi had sold me out, and now he wanted to finish what he'd started. The garage was dead. Bibi showed up in his tailor-made suit, gold watch, and cufflinks to match, all way beyond a cop's pay. Maxi. Oozing suave charm, he was guilty as hell. What the hell does BB stand for anyway? Backstabbing bastard? Come on, don't be like that. Have a cigar. I don't smoke. Maxie, you have no idea how big this is. It's huge. You have no idea. I think I do. You're a bribe-taken bent cop who sold out his partner. Those mobsters in the subway were a dead giveaway. Hard to miss. Bet it was exactly like this with Alex. Up close and personal. You can't win this one, Max. No. But I can make damn sure none of you do either. BB turned out to be another cardboard cutout bad guy. A bad cop on the take. A cowardly right-hand man fleeing from the scene leaving his paid thugs to do his dirty work. Thank <laughs> you. 